Hey, many times we've been asked about how do we onboard clients or businesses or anyone we're working with. And I tend not to answer that question fully. And I didn't used to in the past. I'm a little bit more open now and I'm going to reveal a lot more. And you can go and get a copy of the process that we use in our $1 business pack. And there's a link in the video description. But when it comes to onboarding, the reason why I wasn't very open about it in the past was not because I was ashamed of it, but because there was a little bit of imposter syndrome kicked in. I always used to hear about people using lots of other tools and there are some amazing tools out there. By the way, the method I use, there is a very logical reason why I use it. And I think it's going to be very realistic and practical for a lot of you. But that doesn't mean I'm going to take anything away from the other tools. And I will mention some of them. The reason being is that I always felt that our method was too simplistic. I felt it was too easy. It wasn't very flashy. It wasn't like an online spectacular tool that you see out there. And I felt a lot of imposter syndrome kicked in. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, people generally on forums and websites and YouTube videos talk about certain products and how they can use it to like um, interact with the customer, how they can share invoices, share details, how you can do time management, how you can have like two, three way conversation. Maybe in some cases you can even like activate a video call meeting there and there. And I feel like all of those tools were really, really good. But. If you think about a lot of your clients, how many of them are a little bit technophobic? How many of them are going to be able to understand and use a system? Now, a lot of people say, well, what's the problem? They just have to set up a guest account or a login account and they just have to log in and they can go and see what you need to see and they can click the invoice and bloody, bloody, blah, blah, and everyone is happy tickety boo. It's really easy to say because. I, there have been times when I've worked with some people and they share with me their system because I'm working with them on something and I get a little bit confused because I'm like, so I've got to go here and I've got to go there. And then I may be using another system with someone else. Oh, I've got to use this and then I've got to click there. And you're having to, in your brain, understand that there's going to be loads of systems out there. It's bad enough for some people trying to navigate and manage social media and other logins galore. I mean, everything is digital these days. It's bad enough when you forget your password or you get told your password is compromised and you start having to go away and filter through and change everything. Now, when it comes to third party tools, and I'm not taking anything away from any of these tools, all right, Kitchen, Atrium, anything like that, they are really, really good because they give you well above and beyond what I need or what I'm going to talk to you about today. So if there's loads of extra features that you want, because maybe you're going to store revision versions of the websites or you're going to have an area where they can collate, so they can drag and drop the videos and the images and blah, 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 and you can discuss stuff with them. If you want to have all of that in one place, especially if you're like a, an agency or there's like multi-pole, multi-pole, multi-persons within your team, or maybe you're navigating, not that, my words are uh, screwing up today. Maybe you're working with a member of your team who's not actually here, right? They may be across the world. Having like a tool where you can drop things in and out can make it a lot easier for you. But sometimes these tools create more havoc and hassle as you start to work with them. It could be that your team don't understand or don't like it. It could be that your customers don't understand or don't like it. Maybe they've got to log in to access it. Maybe they forgot their password. Maybe you're waiting on them. Maybe you've got to go and create videos and documentation for them on where to click. Or they keep emailing you. So I click there and it's not there. Yeah, I know because you need to click this drop down. I click the drop down. No, it's the other drop down. Yeah, but I've clicked that as well. No, it's the drop down next door to that drop down inside of that drop down. And then you hit the checkbox button. And then you start to get frustrated and arguments brew and they don't like it and you don't enjoy it. Onboarding is meant to be really, really simple. It's about how do you collate or collect resources or information for a website? Images, video, links, social media, whatever, content, headlines, keywords. Does it have to go through a third party tool? It's basically what I'm trying to get to because I have used Notion. 
Okay, I've used Notepad. I've used loads of different tools. I've used Canva in the past as well. Canva's, you know, you can go and create a fancy template. The problem is that you're then expecting your client to work with something that they may have no experience of and they just don't like or they don't get on board or they wreck it or mess up or something like that. I mean, it's like you can go to Canva, you can create a document, save it as a PDF, send it to the client. If all they've got to do is look at it, you could get away with that. But then if they need to complete or add something, maybe they now have got to go to Adobe or somewhere else and now they've got to complete it. And it can work both ways as well. It could be that your client starts to use tools like that and send you stuff. And you're like, well, no, now I've got to spend an extra 20 minutes being able to sign or type into that. Because collecting information for a website build and being able to relay invoices and milestones and how the project is going or if there's an issue or if there's going to be a gap in production or maybe because you're not available or maybe there's a gap because you can't proceed until your client has signed off a homepage or something like that because they're on holiday. If you're not managing that, it makes working on projects very cumbersome and, like I said, frustrating. So onboarding is massively important. And like I've said, there's loads of tools. You, can, you know, Kitchen, Atrium, Notion, you know, Canva. There's loads of other tools out there. But the tool I use, and I've already mentioned, you know, our $1 packs, and you can go and get the onboarding one and get access to our document, is the document that we use is a Word document. That's how simplistic it is. And that is why whenever I used to get asked in the past, I was always a little bit like, yeah, we have, we have our way of doing stuff like that. And people would always say to me, what, you're not using Notion? I'd be like, no, no, no. I, I, yeah, I use Notion for project managing and task management. Believe me, Notion is amazing. You know, I can access it on my iPad, my iPhone, my computer. I can be anywhere in the world and I'll always be able to keep up to date. You make a change and it's still accessible on all your devices. I love it. But when it comes to working with clients, I feel like I'm asking too much of them. Yep, yeah, now you've got to go here. And then they're like, oh, do I download the app? Do I download the desktop app? Do I go here? It, I don't want to be spending time. I'm going to use the term wasting time going over and explaining the same thing all the time. Yep, yeah, go here, click here, go get the invoice. The onboarding that we do within a Word document allows me to drop in invoices. You can either embed them or just paste them in. I can have my project management. I can let them know about milestones. I can let them know about what they need to do and what I need to do and how I want it. You know, you can't send your images via WhatsApp. You got to send them via WeTransfer and I put a link in and they've got to send it a certain way. And I will let them know that I will convert them into WebP. I just want the full resolution or whatever. Or maybe they're happy doing the WebP. So you make it clear so we know who's responsible for what and when it's going to happen. And what are the milestones? Is there going to be a gap? At what point am I going to expect them to sign off? So if I've gone and said, look, we start on Monday and I want you to sign off the homepage Monday night, Tuesday morning by midday, no later than midday. They know. So, they, so if they then turn around and go, well, I didn't know. Well, no, you did know. And that document, that onboarding, as we proceed, we update it. Maybe we now add in extra rows or columns or whatever. Go and add it in. Maybe we now got extra invoices. Fine, add it in. Maybe there's a gap or something's changed or now we're going to convert the website into a WooCommerce website. That was never on the cards. Right, okay, let's now review the proposal and the contract and the add-ons and what needs to be paid now and what needs to be paid later. It's a Word document that I can email to you. Email, I mean, come on. You're going to say, yeah, but now they've got to access it on email. Well, look, we're not going to deliver it in the post on a printed out document, which you could do if they're just down the road or next door to you, then you could do that. But this is email that they are 99.9% .9 most likely going to be accessing or have access to readily on their phone or whatever device they're using. They do not have to technically log into anything. Again, though, you could argue and go, yeah, but they need to be logged into their email and their accounts. Yeah, I know. But, you know, we can't do everything for them. So when it comes to onboarding, 
There's loads of third party tools and I think they all deserve applause and credit for what they do. But I kind of weigh down to what do I need and what does my client need or what are they going to be comfortable with? And we have gone down the road before with using third party tools and there's always a problem. And it's something that you could foresee. You know that your client who uh, may be an elderly client, and I don't mean any disrespect here, you know, are they really going to cope with maybe using like a third party communication tool where I'm going to then go, right, what about this? And what about that? Are they going to like getting like 20 notifications come through saying Imran has now said this, Imran has now said that. Are they going to be happy with that? you got to think about them, their state of mind. How are they going to feel? But you could equally have someone younger than me as well who's really on board. Hey, you know, they're TikTok and Instagramming left, right, center. Are they still going to like it if I now go right now? You've got to go through like a tree to get to the invoice. Now you've got to go like that through this folder and over there. And are they really going to get it? I mean, I've seen some really amazing Notion templates for onboarding. I've seen people selling them. I've seen them. I've had access to a few as well. And they're really good. But at the same time, I'm like wondering if it's been made too clicky or clicky, clicking, clicking, clickety click, fingering, finger clicks. You know, because often you look at it and go, that could have been done on one page. But you've made me go from here to this folder to another page because you want to space it out. You know, no one likes to say, hey, go and pay $10 for our onboarding document and it's only one page. Hey, by the way, ours is only $1 and I think it's three or four pages, but you can lengthen it out as you add more stuff. That's the building blocks for what you need. And if you don't like it on Word and you want to go and stick it on Excel, do it. But then you've got to remember, what if your client's not got the right kind of Excel? What if they're still using Lotus 1, 2, 3? Okay, so always think about what your client's got. And even with a basic Word document, they can still open that on email, right? You don't make it too complex. You don't stick in pivot tables. You don't start sticking in macros. You keep it simple because the onboarding experience has to be an enjoyable experience for your client and for you. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Go and check out the $1 packs. I'll see you soon. Bye.